it's very important to figure out what sort of heating system you use in your house. Basically, it comes down to three types. There's space heaters, like this wood stove, or like many other types. Space heaters very simply heat up the space around them. A little electric portable heater, that's a space heater. Anything that heats the space around it is a space heater. The next type that's very common is a forced air furnace. Um, they could be natural gas, they could be oil, they could be propane, but it forces hot air through ducts. And then your third option is a heat pump, which also forces hot air through ducts, but they're very different from a forced air furnace, so they're considered somewhat separate. Let's think about the heating system. Okay. So, do you know what you use to heat this place? I heat um, with wood, but I do have backup, two electric backup heat, baseboard and uh, a heat pump. Okay. These here, these are called baseboard heaters because they're, they're always attached to the baseboard of, of a wall. In Pamela's case, she doesn't use them anymore. A lot of people who have these and don't need them have just left them there because it's easier and cheaper. They're very expensive to run. They're just like an electric space heater and it's, it's electricity is not the cheapest fuel to use for heating. It just, it just isn't. Yeah, baseboards, if you can avoid using those, they're expensive. Yeah. Yeah, you probably know that. Yeah. They've <laughs> never been turned on in this house. <laughs> yeah, it's good just in case. But right. Yeah, better. Yep. So that, that's good, and it's good you know. Some people don't even know what they have. Um, do you change your, your furnace filter often enough? Um, I did change it once. Um, I've been here almost two years, and I've changed it once, but I think I've only turned... That would be the heat pump. Mm -hmm. I've only turned that on twice. This here is what we would generally call the outdoor units. It's either an air conditioner or a heat pump. And just by looking at it, it's not that easy to see. On some of them, if you look deep down in, you can see something called a reversing valve. That's the tell, telling sign of a heat pump. If it doesn't have a, a reversing valve, it's probably a central air conditioner instead. The, only, the, the very best way to find out, though, is really easy. You Google it. So, you find the tag, which in this case is right here, and you can either take a photo of this, or you can just write, write it down. So you take a photo, the advantage is you come, come inside and you can zoom it up and you can make sure you don't misread the model number. They're often, you know, it's, it tends to be very confusing with these model numbers if they're writing a zero or an O. Um, and that makes a difference when you're Googling it. But in any case, this one's pretty easy. It's an XB13. We already saw from the brands that it's a train. So train XB13. It has the manufacturer date on it, 2006. And hidden in the serial code and hidden in the model number is usually a lot of information that you don't really need to know. But I can tell you this is a two ton unit, um, which is probably a good size unit for this house. And everything looks good. You wanna check the insulation around these pipes, make sure that's all good. Another thing as an energy auditor that we do, not only is to look for energy efficiency issues, but also safety issues. This right here, this is a safety issue, and I would highly recommend to Pamela that she move this. Any embers that jump out of there when she's putting, the door is tight, so it would only happen when she opened the door to put in more wood, but if it happened and she didn't notice, an ember jumps onto this carpet, starts a fire, and you have a big problem. So you definitely want to keep the code, I believe, is 18 inches in front of there. But you could, you could find out, talk to your local building inspector. But it, there sh it should be at least back to here, that you don't want anything flammable. All right, so now we're walking up to the furnace. And I can tell it's an oil furnace for a few reasons. One was the oil tank that we'd seen outside. 
The other is this damper here. This helps create the draft that's going to allow all the exhaust fumes to go up the chimney and out of the house. This particular type is particular to oil furnaces. Uh, I've never seen this type with a natural gas furnace. Often this tag won't be here, but it's here and it tells us this is 85.9% efficient. In terms of today's technology and an oil fired furnace, that's the best you can get. I pointed out that this is an oil burning furnace. But what you know for sure, for sure, as soon as you walk up to it, is that it's combustion. Combustion, again, means that it's burning a fuel. It's creating fire. So it's oil, it's natural gas, it's propane, it's kerosene. And the way you know is because there's this flue pipe coming out, which in this case is going into this wall and up the chimney out of the house. If there's no flue pipe, there's no combustion. And if you have a flue pipe like this, but it's plastic, it's usually two inch, about this wide, white PVC, that means you got a 90 plus furnace. And that's because it's so efficient that the, the gases coming up the flue aren't very hot. So a plastic pipe is okay. Which brings me to the whole question about what does it mean if my furnace is 85, 90% efficient? What that means is Let's say in this case, this, we know this is an 85% efficient furnace. What that means is 15% of the energy that goes in to produce the heat goes up this chimney and is lost. The other 85% that's produced goes into your house and becomes heat for your house, not including stuff that's lost in, in the duct from duct leakage or other reasons. Whatever you watching this video, whatever system you have in your house, there's a good chance it's not worth ripping it out. Depends how old it is, depends how efficient it is, but for the most part there's workarounds. There's just ways you can make it work better. That could be calling in an HVAC professional and having it maintained properly and tuned up. Um, it, it could be if you have an oil furnace, just changing the pump from making it from an 80% to an 85%, just like that. There, there's things you can do, but generally it's a very expensive thing to rip it out and create, put in a whole new furnace or a whole new system. So um, you want to think twice about that. <laughs>